Okay. What's up, guys? It's Billy Z, Billy Zerkat. Welcome to my Sunday sandwich series on Kitsch. It's week 11. The Bears just lost again. I am hurt, but I'm actually not hurt that much because I have a really great friend joining me today, a special guest. You may know him from such shows as, or Instagram pages, shows, TikToks, whatever you want to call it. Sandwiches of History, Barry. Yes. Thank Thanks you for having for me on, time. Billy. I'm excited to try the sandwich, man. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, buddy. Uh, we are here today, as we are every Sunday, for my Sunday sandwich series, where I like to bring you an original fun take on a sandwich to coincide with the NFL season, because I told you at the beginning of the year, the Bears are probably going to be bad, and I need something to get me through Sundays. <laughs> the, 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 the switch has flipped the past few weeks where the Bears are actually fun again, but guess what? They're fun, and I have a fun sandwich with me, so it's great. And now I have a fun... Uh, Fun partner here and uh, partner you today make it a sandwich, so it'll be good stuff. Um, before we get started, a uh, couple housekeeping things. Follow me on Instagram. The Real Billy Z is my Instagram page. You could follow me obviously on Kitsch. If you're new to Kitsch today and you're just watching as guests, sign up for a free account because we have what's called a chef's table here. You can add yourself to that um, and join in on the fun of this. You can ask us questions. You can join in via two-way video. Um, yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with that. So, you know, go ahead and sign up for your free Kitsch account. Um, and you can also obviously follow Barry on, uh, at Sandwiches of History, uh, and talk about your, we have a couple other ones too. Like if you want to plug those while we're at it at the beginning. Sure. Why not? Uh, I've got yeah. obviously Sandwiches of History. I've also got In the Chips with Barry. I've got, uh, Barry is cooking again, craft beer, Barry, uh, Barry's ice cream o'clock. And I think that covers all of the food related <laughs> Would you, would you say these are very good accounts or how, I don't know if we're, is that too much? Uh, too what, much? Did, what did I say? What? Are, are they very good accounts? Oh, that's, no. Uh, <laughs> I guess. All right, guys, thanks for coming out today. I appreciate yeah. it. No, yeah. it's, uh, it's really cool. I mean, you do, we're going to go into more uh, details and I want, I want to talk about your history, uh, your, your personal uh, history of sandwiches sure. uh, and sandwiches of history, but uh, okay. focus on the first thing, task at hand today. What sandwich are we making for week 11? We are doing a broccoli cheddar sandwich. Uh, the idea of this sandwich is based on broccoli cheddar soup. And, you know, you wanted to go to Panera, get yourself a little bread bowl, a little broccoli cheddar. Speaking of Panera, I think someone just tagged you in a Panera post, you said, right before we went on? Yeah, the, the Panera posted, uh, plus up your holidays this season. I'm like, ooh, Excuse Cease and desist. <laughs> you get it. You, get, you, pick, you pick two cease and desist. That's what you gotta get. I, you know so. what? I, I don't have a trademark on it, and I'm pretty sure I'm not the first person to ever say plus up. So I don't know. I think, I think you are. I think you are. Uh, so we're making a broccoli cheddar. <laughs> I'm taking a broccoli yeah. cheddar sandwich today. Uh, or bro broccoli cheddar turning into a broccoli cheddar soup turning into a sandwich today. So yeah. we're gonna take you through the process of making that. Um, why don't we actually get started on that? And then once we want to talk more about what's uh, talk more about yourself here. So first thing we right, did, let's... first thing we're doing, we have to roast some broccoli. And this is going to be pretty straightforward. Um, we have our oven set at 400. We have both, by the magic of just using knives before we started, we cut up these broccoli into florets, seasoned with a little olive or uh, coated in a little olive oil, seasoned with salt and pepper. We're going to toss those in the oven right now and get these in um, so we can get that started. And probably take these off, roast these off for 15, 20 minutes. So uh, I'll just keep an eye on it. When it gets okay. a, little, the, uh, maybe a little char on there, just soften it up. Um, the other two elements of the sandwich are going to be a cheese sauce for your broccoli cheddar. And then I wanted to cut the richness of, you know, just a bunch of cheese sauce on there um, with a little pickled carrot. And I'm going to grab mine from my fridge. So... Homemade pickled carrot. What's that? Homemade pickled carrot. Yes, homemade pickled Yes, yes, yes. This is what we're going to talk, talk about how we did it here. Yep. I figured, so when you're making broccoli cheddar soup, the, it's pretty simple soup to make. You know, you're just going to, um, you know, saute some onions and garlic and some, you know, sometimes celery and carrots. Um, build your roux, add your cream or your milk, uh, and then your, obviously your broccoli. Let it simmer with some, you know, some broth in there typically. And then add in your cheddar and that's pretty much it. So I like the idea of having, you know, carrots in this sandwich, but maybe just, you know, in a little different way. So what we did was we took some, 
took a couple carrots. You can either just buy carrots, uh, carrot matchsticks, like Julianne carrots like this, or just take, you know, honestly, one or two carrots. And then, uh, yeah. Which, what, did you buy pre, pre-sliced ones up or did you? I, I shredded on a cheese grater. Oh, there you go. Perfect. That's, yeah. that's the best way to do it. So um, we just, this is a quick pickle. It's, uh, I, I did this about an hour and a half ago. I'll taste one myself actually right now. I believe that's called a quickle. Yeah, quickle. So made a quickle. Um, all you do is take a teaspoon of kosher salt, teaspoon of sugar. And what I do is put this in a bowl first, coat it, um, coat your carrots in the salt and sugar, and kind of squeeze it, massage it in there. It's called like basically like macerating it. It starts to help the carrots release some um, some liquid. And then I cover it in rice vinegar. If you have unseasoned rice rice vinegar, I'd probably recommend that. If you have seasoned, that's probably fine too. Um, I would say probably eighth a cup, but really, I just I just get enough to cover it um, where it's uh, where the carrots are completely submerged, mm-hmm. um, and then just stir that stir that all together, to- throw it in your fridge, and then it'll be good anywhere from really twenty minutes overnight, and they should last at least up a, up to a week in your fridge, uh, and they're great. They're going to give you a little vinegary, a little sweetness to the sandwich, um, and just cut all that richness from the uh the cheese sauce you could also throw in some jalapenos too if you want to get a little spicy going but that's yeah, that, 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 might be, that might be a plus up that might be a plus up. <laughs> <laughs> look you dead in the eyes there before i said that so yeah, no, uh, i wish i would have bought, bought a jalapeno but i did not so. <laughs> yeah so that's that's our pickled carrots and then uh the last thing we're going to be doing here and we may as well just get started on it now um, actually, I want to talk a minute before we get started because the cheese sauce won't take too long to make. So that's really the last item element. Oh, bread. Forgot to talk about that. The most, probably the most important part of the sandwich is the bread. So I love the idea of using sourdough bread um, to represent like a sourdough bread bowl. You are in San Jose. I feel like you have a good access to a good amount of sourdough out in the West Coast there. Uh, yeah, a ridiculous, copious yeah. amount of sourdough available in the Bay, SF Bay Area for sure. That's awesome. Have you yeah. made have you made your own bread before? As far as like sourdough, I know you made I, I made have, like rolls and such. I have tried making bread, and I have had I the the it's interesting. The one that I had the most success with was the um, Maltese bread fatira. Um, for some reason, that turned out perfect and beautiful. But every other time I've tried to bake bake bread, it's always been like, mm. yeah. so I'm not it's, a baker. No, I I love baking. I, I bake I bake bread a lot. I started. I didn't start breaking bread until about like 2017. I was I always cooked. I enjoyed cooking, but never I like the idea of baking. Yeah. And I wanted to do more savory baking, like you know, breads and pizzas and such. I started with there's a good recipe. I'll I can even send it to you later. It's um it's a no need uh no need sourdough or no need dough. It basically you'll end up making like a bowl, kind of like the sourdough. I've, I've done that, but it always comes out really dense. Really? That's my, my, that's my biggest problem with baking bread is that it always comes out really dense hmm. so i've got to figure out what i'm doing wrong maybe it's your height i mean it depends on like maybe it's not hydrated enough sometimes the temperature in the room i there's so many factors that that go into it. i'll i'll take maybe we'll do a personal live stream one day and i'll walk you through some stuff and we'll okay some, or i'll at least send some good recipes to start even if you want to do something simple there's an easy easiest recipe ever there's a no need focaccia recipe i use all the time Okay. And you can make some killer sandwiches. All you do is you're mixing flour, salt, yeah. sugar, yeast, um, and a little olive oil. Yeah. Just stir that together and you throw it in a container in your fridge, let it sit overnight, put it into a to a you know, baking pan to uh to rise for like an hour or two. It bubbles up, you dimple it, you bake it. It's like easy, easy stuff. So I need um, that recipe. <laughs> Yeah, so I know I, I baking bread's fun. It's cathartic. I, I I did a ton of it like anybody like everybody else did during the pandemic too when there's nothing yes. to do yeah. uh, during COVID. So um but yeah, I got some sourdough bread. I grabbed some from this baker here in Chicago uh, called Aya, Aya Bakery. Um they make awesome, awesome bread. This is their country sourdough. So I have this toasted on one side, just the outside of the bread, almost kind of like you do with a bun. I didn't want it to be I don't want to just rip the, the rip the, the top of your mouth or, you know, tear it up when you uh, take a bite of this. So I figured you get a little crispiness on the outside, but it's still soft in the inside and you'll have that, you know, soft broccoli and cheese in there. So it'll be good. So 
that's our bread. And then again, we'll work on our cheese sauce in a second. But let's talk sandwiches okay. of history. So right. what, how, let's just talk, talk about the how. Like, how did you get into it? Uh, a friend of mine sent me a PDF of the up-to-date sandwich book of 1909. And he was like, these are pretty wild. I'm like, yeah, some of these are pretty crazy, like the Swiss sandwich. Uh, or No, I'm sorry, it was the dairy sandwich. <laughs> which was basically two slices of Swiss cheese slathered in butter and put together, no bread. Um, so he's like, this would be pretty interesting to do on social media. I'm like, yeah, it would. So I just started doing it. Yeah. Um, and I did it on Instagram. I would take a, a picture of the, the, a photo of the sandwich and post that on my wall. And then in the stories, I would do a video making a video, but yeah. that would disappear after 24 hours. So I, it didn't work very well. didn't really get a lot of traction. So I let that kind of like, falter and not post anything for about nine months and then tiktok came along and i thought well what if i did the making of videos on tiktok yeah and since then like i've, I've gotten more pdfs i access a lot of books from the internet archive uh I, I i've got some books that i inherited from a neighbor um so it's just expanded from there that's awesome is there a certain sandwich that let me sticks out that you said like wow this is the one that maybe got me like you have a hundred thousand followers now on Instagram, would you say? And how you have like even double that on TikTok, right? One hundred eight on Instagram and like two hundred ninety four or something like that, and thousand on um, TikTok. It's crazy. It was there a certain video that you think like kind of jump started, took off, or was it just kind of a slow rise? There was one on TikTok. There was definitely one that got like two million views. It was like it was pretty crazy, and it was a sandwich of our history. And I can't remember what the exact sandwich recipe was at this point because it was like a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, but it, it just like just absolutely took off and then everything got dragged up with it uh, after the post after that. So uh, on tick on Instagram, I'm not quite sure what caused everything to go off, but it did. It, it skyrocketed in a similar fashion where it went really fast and really high. And then it's now it's sort of like, you know, just getting just going along yeah. like, like it was before. Yeah. It's, it's kind of weird. What do you. Like, I always think about it, like when, you know, I don't have that, that type of following, obviously. And I always think to yes. myself, like, what goes through your head when you open up Instagram one day and also it says, like, you have a thousand new followers or, you know, you posted a video and you have 5,000 likes or, you know, all these comments and you're getting tagged and things. Like, do you just, what goes through your head at that time? I, I feel like I personally would just be like, whoa, this is insane. I can't believe what's happening. How do I even, where do I go from here? Do I reply to people? Do I just continue well, going? What do you do? What do you yeah, no, it, but it's very much a, when it first starts happening, you're very much like, what, what is this? Yeah. Why, why is this happening? I mean, it's great, but you know, like you said, but it does increase the number of DMs you get, the number of comments you get. And I try to respond and uh, like and respond to comments, uh, almost all of them, if I can. Yeah. Um, and people DM me all the time, and I, I respond to them. If they if they tag me and, and share in, in the stories, I thank them because, I mean, it's very it's generous of them to even spend time watching my videos, let alone sharing the account with someone or, yeah. or any of their friends. So I appreciate it. Um, but it can be, the volume of it can be a little bit overwhelming at times. So I try to just kind of work in batches to to, to respond and, and like and, and stuff like that. But yeah. you know, like I, I get, like I said, it's kind of leveled off now. So that's like. When things were taking off, you would see like, I just got three thousand likes on this video in like two hours. Like it was just insane. Yeah. And so I would methodically go through the comments and try and like and comment and, and that kind of stuff. Um, but I'd have to do it over a series of days because yeah. it just it was too much. Now it's leveled off to a point where it's like, ah, it's pretty manageable. Yeah. If this this there's a certain I don't know there's like a certain like boost it gives you because I even the other day we put up uh we put up a collab post together promoting yeah. this I made a little reel and put that up there. Yeah. And I don't have the type of following you have. So yeah. when you do a collaboration post, the the feed the post will end up on both of our accounts. Yeah. And so it's a it's a way to almost like parlay both of our audiences. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, you know, I'll I'll get anywhere from I don't know, I, uh, Instagram's weird. Sometimes I'll get five hundred views on a on a post and sometimes I get like ten thousand, fifteen thousand. Yep. Yeah. We're, I think we're rolling at like 35,000 views and that's like mind blowing to me. Yeah. It's, it's yeah, just well, crazy. Like, and then you see, even like you can see the number of times that people shared it. That is even more telling to me 
when yeah. people will actually share what you're doing. Yep. Like that's crazy. Like that's, that's awesome. You know, it's a yeah. kind of cool feeling. Totally agree. Totally agree. Yeah. Um, let's, let's get started with this cheese sauce really quickly. Uh, okay. Get going. So um, we're going to make it a pretty simple cheddar cheese sauce and kind of want to spice it up a little bit to give you the same flavors that you would get from, you know, a typical broccoli cheddar base of your onions and garlic without mm -hmm. using any actual onions or garlic in this. So, um, <clears throat> on the stove top here, I'm going to turn my camera a little bit and try to get a little bit of a view here, but, um, and I'll bring my, I'll bring it over here. I didn't want to like do a picture of my double camera because there'll be like 80 boxes on the screen. It's going to look like NFL red zone. Look like <laughs> we're, we're going live to like an octobox here. We have all I know these... exactly a bunch of people shouting at each other. <laughs> yeah, we don't need that. Let's, let's go live to Detroit. Well, the, the Eagles just uh, scored a touchdown here. There's uh, another thing. Speaking of the Eagles, we we checked those we checked the score right before we went on. I think the Colts were actually beating the Eagles somehow. They uh, were madness, true madness. All right, so um, over medium heat, we're gonna just build a simple roux. Roux is a combination, if you don't know, of butter and flour um, that helps you build up a, a base for like a cream sauce. We're basically gonna make a, a bechamel sauce. Yep. So two tablespoons of butter um, going in. And we're just going to let that melt. At what point are you adding the uh, seasoning? Seasoning is going to, once we have our... Um, the roux? Yeah, once we have our bechamel, <clears throat> now basically, once we have the, the roux set um, and we add our milk, mm -hmm. let that milk start to thicken up. Okay. Um, I'm actually most likely going to say, I think when I add this, you can, you can add the seasoning right at that point when you build the bechamel. Okay. I think I'm actually just going to add it at the end after we get our cheese melt to do it off the heat. And then we okay. can taste it for, you know, for additional seasoning. But I will follow your lead. Yeah. Uh, my butter is melted, so I'm going to go ahead and put in the uh, flour. Whisk Perfect. that in. Yeah. All right. So what you want to do is you got your two tablespoons of flour. You're on the list. Um, you want to stir this right away. You want to incorporate, you want to incorporate this flour into the butter. And you want to cook out that, you know, raw butter taste. Here. Just cook it a little bit. You can see that we have it cooked down. So it's going to look like this if I have it on my whisk. You can see it's just looks like a big, just big nasty looking paste at first. Um, but once we have that cooked and we have a... Uh, you have kind of a blondish color to it. Yeah. Yeah. So now what we want to do is we have two cups of. I have. Whole, did you get whole milk? I got whole milk. Perfect. All right. So we're gonna do this a little bit at a time. So we're gonna add in some, add in some milk, and then stir this in, um, and get that, get this base really smooth. And it's gonna thicken up. It's just gonna. Re, it's like almost like hydrating that. Um, that roux that we have in there. But once that incorporates, add some more. And the reason we're doing this little by little is just so we have a really smooth sauce and no lumps. All right. So once you have that in incorporated, then we can slowly just add the rest of it. And this is like the same method if you're going to make like mac and cheese. You want to use make a cheese sauce or mac and cheese, or even like a gravy. If you're going to use a gravy or make a gravy for Thanksgiving, come here for the holiday, you probably do the same thing: butter and butter and flour, and then instead of milk, you're going to use you know beef stock or turkey stock. You know. Now, isn't that a velouté or something like that when they use a uh, stock instead of uh, dairy? Yeah, you got it. Look at you. Someone was on foodnetwork.com. Yeah. <laughs> well, so, I'm uh, Jacques Pepin. <laughs> that's your that's your newest uh, newest page. You just gotta just call it that. You should just do a page where you just do different kinds of rooms. <laughs> sauce. Sauce. sauce and a berry. Yeah. Uh, right, I'm, gonna take, I'm gonna take my broccoli out because it's getting a little uh, done. Is it okay? I'm gonna yeah. check. The, the toast oven seems to um do things a little quicker than a regular or conventional oven, so. Okay. All right, so 
I'm going to turn up the heat. So we had medium heat initially. Now we're going to raise it up, and we want to bring this to a simmer um, while keep constantly stirring this. And we'll see it start to thicken up. And once it starts to thicken up to the point where you can take a spoon in and um, take a spoon into your pot here, and the cream kind of covers it, and you can take your finger and run it through, and it'll leave a streak. You know it's thick enough. It's a little little trick. Yeah. All right. Let's check. The dark one. It's got a little uh, singe on it. You can kind of see. Oh, good. Oh. Mine's gonna need. A, I need a few more minutes on mine. Yep. I keep making the sauce. All right. So, take a look. All right. So I got some tiny bubbles forming here. So it's starting to heat up. I have, for some reason, I only have a giant, uh, giant saucepan today. <laughs> like wait, it's, there's not enough. Uh, there's way too much space for this, yeah. for this little amount of sauce I'm making. But how do you like your toaster oven, by the way? I have never owned a toaster oven. A what? A toaster oven? I've never owned a toaster oven. Oh no, they're great. Yeah. They're, they're not. They're not great at toast. <laughs> they're, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> they're okay. At toast. They're just okay at toast. But I mean, it's great for, especially in the summer when you want to cook something, you don't want to heat the whole house. Yeah. It's it's great to have that option. I feel like the name's a little problematic, though. <laughs> maybe not all toast ovens don't toast well. Ours is ours is a little old, so maybe that, that might be it. All right, don't heard might be problematic that way. <laughs> How's your sauce looking? Uh, it's thickening, but it's not bubbling yet, so it's not yeah. reached its uh, full thickening power yet. Yeah, same. Now there's another way too. Have you ever made uh, you ever made cheat sauce? Um, there's another method where it's actually pretty simple, probably easier than than doing this. But I, I just prefer I wanted to do this method. But where you could take some cornstarch and coat your you coat your your cheese in some cornstarch, and then you just heat up evaporated milk. Oh, I've not heard of that. No. Oh yeah. So you just it's it's actually a lot. It's a lot easier than this, but I don't know. Sometimes I don't, I just don't like, I feel like it's, uh, yeah, it like, it, it just kind of, the texture's weird. Uh, like, after yeah. you, if you let it set for a little bit, it just ends up like hardening up. But, but all you do is really like, you just heat up some evaporated milk, bring it yeah. to a simmer, and then you add in that cheese. Um, and because they have the cornstarch on there, that's going to be the thickener. So that replaces your roux. Right, right, right. Yeah. I, I have not heard of that, but. I don't know. That seems like texturally it'd be a little bit different. Yeah, I don't. I don't really care for that. Um, okay, so I got bubblage. Definitely have bo bu uh, bu bubbles coming up here. Yeah, I did too. It's starting to thicken up here. I think just like another, honestly, another thirty seconds. I think will be good. And so now we have some mild, mild cheddar. Uh, two cups that we just uh, shredded ahead of time. Yeah. Um, and I say this every week, if you're making sandwiches or using anything where you need to have melted cheese, don't buy the pre-shredded cheeses yep. because it has a, an anti-caking powder, basically, on top of it, uh, like a starch, basically, that it keeps it from clumping together in a bag. But because of that, it like slows down the melting process and gives it kind of weird, like gritty um, yep. taste. So... Just go to the go to the deli section. You can just get the block of it, or just go to your actual go to the deli itself and just say if you don't want to buy a ton, just get like we'll get a half pound chunk and have them just right, right get right. you. All right. So this is pretty. Mine's pretty smooth. Let me get a spoon and I'll come close and show you guys what I mean. So, yeah. Okay, so you're about the same consistency as mine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So. One second. Cool thing about live cooking is uh, sometimes you do things that you question. Um, like right now, I just, I fumbled, you know, sports, you know, sports guy over here. I fumbled my spoon into my uh, bechamel, so I didn't want to like dip my hand into scalding hot uh, yeah. pizza. So you don't want to cut your hand in scalding hot milk. That's pretty Yeah. Cool. Who knows? So now, if you look closely here, it's coating the back of the spoon. It's yeah. thick enough. We're going to take this off the heat. All right. And 
we're going to go ahead and little by little mix in some of our cheese. I've got a so white take cheddar. Take a little bit and then just whisk it in. And once that melts and it's pretty smooth, go ahead and just slowly add the rest. It's all about like taking your time with this, you know, taking yeah. your time when you're getting the, the roux together and then you're adding, trying to thicken it up and then adding the cheese instead of adding all at once and just like, you know, potentially having clumps and, and it yeah. being really gritty, yep. just make sure everything is all melty. All right. All right. So. Once this is incorporated, now we have to season this in a second. So, all right, all right get this really smooth. All right, so I have a teaspoon of garlic powder, see if I onion powder, um, having some white pepper, and uh, I think that was actually it. And we're going to add some salt and uh, some salt in a second too. Um, Get that in there, and I'm just gonna go ahead. I'm just gonna take a pinch of salt for now. Okay. Just get this stirred in, and then we can taste it and see if we need to add more, add more salt. Okay. So it should uh, should be pretty. You can see here. Yep. Pretty smooth. All right. Um, little taste. As you can see, coats back spoon. You know, I got a thick sauce. Oh, that's good. The real good. Oh my goodness, that's. There that's... you go. All right, I'm gonna add a little, I'm gonna add a little bit more, a little more salt in my end. Um, you could, if you wanted to, add like a pinch. Of, I usually add like a pinch of cayenne, sometimes mustard powder to a cheese sauce. But I wanted this to, you know, I'm really trying to stick to the idea of a broccoli cheddar soup. Yep. And so you're not really using any of those oh, those flavors on that. So I wanted to keep um, keep that pretty traditional. So we can keep this now. Just put this aside. I think we can put over like a low put over low heat on your on your uh, burner. Well, the only problem with that for me is our our stove does not do low. Oh, okay. So I might just um, here. Well, keep it off, but then maybe right when we before you before we use it, throw it on for a quick. Uh, okay. Yeah, quick blitz. All right. Let me check on my broccoli real fast. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. In the meantime. Let's talk regular sandwiches. Now, <laughs> well, you're so used to making these odd combinations of sandwiches. Like, what was the, um, was it the grandmother sandwich that had peanut butter and eggs? Yeah. And chili what flakes. Was that, that was fantastic. I thought that was delicious. The, the peanut butter, peanut butter and egg combination. I, um, someone else had, I did a sandwich of our history uh, probably a year ago or something like that. And it was like, over easy egg, peanut butter, and I, I think I plus it up with sriracha, and it was fantastic. Hmm. Uh, and that got my eyes open to the idea of like peanut butter and stuff can, you know, not your traditional, um, necessarily your traditional uh, jelly, jam, sweet stuff, but you can use them savory applications like they do in Thailand with the satay sauce. Yeah. Um, so the, yeah, the grandma sandwich had, had honey, had peanut butter, had chili flakes, and had egg, and it was delicious. It sounds interesting. I saw somebody actually, I think you posted yesterday something in one of your stories. I think someone, one of your um, followers made it. Yep. And like, like prompted me. I, yeah, I was thinking about wanting to do it. I want I, I see some of these sandwiches and I want to try them. Like, it's just funny. Really? Like, even the ones that maybe don't even sound that like, you sure. know, like appetizing right off the bat. It's like, yeah, I would, I would try that. Yeah. I mean, I say go for it. Um, <laughs> and yeah, whenever like someone, uh, makes a sandwich uh, and they tag me on it. I go ahead and share that because it's kind of cool. It's like, wow, check this out. They tried it and they liked it too. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, and so far, I haven't had anyone make one and go, "No, Barry's wrong. This is terrible." <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure it'll happen. Yeah, I'm, Barry. I'm sure it'll happen. Is there is there a sandwich just in general now? Not not talking about any sandwiches of history, anything you've done. Which is, what's your favorite type of sandwich? What's your favorite sandwich? Do you have a top three? Um, just classic sandwiches that there you if you go anywhere and they're on a menu you need to try them it it depends entirely on my mood 
It really does. Okay. Like there's sometimes like there was nothing better than a simple grilled cheese sandwich with tomato soup. Yeah. But there's times when I want an Italian hoagie. There's times when I want a, a blue cheese uh, or a beef, like roast beef, blue cheese and arugula. Yeah. Uh, or I want a shrimp BLT. Right. It's just it really comes down to like, what am I in the mood for? Where am I at yeah. uh, that day? So it, I get asked that a lot. Like, what's your favorite sandwich? It's like, hey, dude, when? Yeah. <laughs> Well, the follow-up to, follow to that question is, uh, do you prefer a hot sandwich or do you prefer, do you prefer a cold sandwich? Again, depends. Depends on mood? Depends yeah. on mood. Depends yeah. on weather. Like, during the winter, I'm definitely going to like a hot sandwich more. Yeah. <laughs> um, but they're both they're both great. Um, so, yeah, I can't, I can't decide. Yeah. Plead the fifth. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I can't agree. No, I mean, there's so many good sandwiches. I, I love this, like... I to be, I feel a, a perfect sandwich. Yeah. Think about like think about like how you're gonna build a sandwich. Obviously, you want good bread. The bread's got to be, you know, it's got to work with the with the textures of what you have inside the sandwich. But I feel like you always you're gonna want some type of you're you're on team mayo, right? You you you're not one of the mayo haters, right? No, I love mayo. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. don't get people that don't like mayo. I think it's you know what though. Everyone's got their own uh, got their own palate, man. That, that's something oh, no. I'm like. You know, like people I know and I trust with their 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 taste absolutely love truffle. And for me, every time I've eaten something with truffle, it tastes like a burning tire fire. I yeah. hate it. But truffle was the worst. But I like I yeah. recognize it like, well, clearly if so many people I respect and I know like it, there's it's not really so much that that is garbage and they're like have bad taste. It just it doesn't work with my palate. So that's why I figured like. Sometimes mayonnaise, uh, there are people who are just completely averse to avocado, which I don't get at all. Yeah. Uh, I don't think but you know what? They they like what they like. That's how it that's goes. Food. That's I mean, that's what food's the best. It's subjective. Like everybody likes their own thing. I mean, they, they, I get asked the time all the time of like the pizza here in Chicago. Oh like, yeah. Oh, like what's your favorite pizza? I'm like, yeah, it just depends on my mood. But like, yeah, I'm not gonna trash. Uh, I'm not gonna have like a crazy hot take on this because like yeah. people will fight. Comment sections on the internet are hilarious, especially with food. Oh, Just, people are like, oh, I'm, <laughs> you know, the best thing is when someone wants to stand up and say, like, I'm from here and this is why it validates my opinion. And they just go off on it. It's like, okay, it's food. Like, it makes you happy. Cool. Yeah. I, may no. like, I may not like that. It's fine. You I'm with you, man. I, I made the mistake of actually posting a video about whether a hot dog is a sandwich or not. <laughs> Started more. And I just deleted it. I ended up deleting it because the comment section was so ridiculous. It's just like, and that basically it comes down to when people ask me, like, is a hot dog a sandwich? I'm like, it is if you want it to be. That's, <laughs> that's really what it comes down to. I have my reasons for thinking that it is, but I'm not going to try and talk you into it. I, <laughs> there's no Did point. I, in it. I forgot to tell you, like, I, I was so close to saying, let's make a hot dog sandwich today. Like, a, you know? like a Chicago style hot dog sandwich i was i was mulling over a couple days ago trying to figure out how to well i had this like i think it's a long-term project that i want to do but i want to somehow turn hot dogs into like a like an actual loaf and have it sliceable just kind oh, of like, wow. like like spam basically like you know yeah, have yeah. a hot dog but that you could slice it and sear it and then you could have it on a flat sandwich on flat bread you know like, <laughs> not on a bun i don't know how to do it i have to figure it out but that's what I'm sitting. That's the, the crazy dumb idea that I'm sitting on right now. I have food ideas that are so silly. I like the idea though. I think you could do it. You probably have to like either create a seasoning blend and make your own from scratch. Yeah. Hot dog loaf, right? Yeah. Or you could uh, grind up a bunch of hot dogs and re reform it. <laughs> that's what I was thinking about doing is is grinding them up. But I just figured I don't know how it would like. I don't know how it would bind. I'd have to figure that out. I've made I made hot dogs from scratch. Um, nice. I did. It was fun. It's not worth the. It's definitely not worth the time. Like you're. It was. It tastes like a, a regular hot dog, and so I thought it was a victory for me. Yeah. You know, it didn't taste any better. It didn't taste any worse. Right. Right. Um, but it's a cool process. But yeah, you have to just make your. I think it's called. A, it's technically called a farce. Okay. Um, you're, it's like that's basically the hot dog goo that you end up making. But okay. taking that, you usually stuff them into like a casing. So I have right. to figure out like how, if you can skip that step and just maybe wrap it up in like plastic wrap or something. I don't, and just have it set. I don't know. I'm going to figure that out. But once I think you could, you could you, yeah, I've got an idea for you. And you could, you put it into basically a terrine or a, into a loaf pan. Yeah. And then bake it in a water bath. 
Yes. You could probably get it to like a spam like uh, consistency that way and then have it sliceable. I think it'd be good. I'm like, yeah. you just do like a quick sear on it and have a little yeah. crusty. I think that would be. Well, yeah, because you'd have more surface area. You'd get more crust. You'd get more caramelization. Yeah. I think it'd be fun. I, I mean, I'm sure it's been done before somewhere, but like, I don't know. I love the idea of them doing it. So I we might do another stream together because if that's if you want to take on that long project with me, if you're, <laughs> if you're up for that. I think I am. I think that sounds fun. <laughs> I'd be really fun because I don't know. We could do uh, you could do a Bay Area inspired hot dog, and I'll do a classic Chicago hot dog. And we could just oh live. man, Chicago hot dogs are so good. We had uh, when I, so I used to live in San Diego. I went mm -hmm. to junior high, high school, and college, and post college I was there. And we had uh, these expats from Chicago open a place called Sluggos, and it was actual legit Chicago hot dogs, and they ruined me for life on hot dogs because oh. I can't you, I can't get them here. Um, yeah. They don't exist. That place doesn't exist anymore in San Diego either. So I have to. I have to either make it myself or go to Chicago. Well, I will. I will do you. I'll do you one step. I will get up. Uh, so Vienna beef here is based in Chicago, and Vienna beef is the you know makes great, yeah. great hot dogs. I'll send you some beef hot dogs, and I'll send you the uh, all the condiments. Well, you have to take care <laughs> of the onions, and uh, I'll you take care of the onions and tomatoes. But I'll send you the celery salt here. I actually was, earlier we were talking about maybe putting celery salt in the. Uh, let me see if I actually have it in my. In the cheese sauce, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's here. Vienna beef. Right there. There's my Vienna beef celery salt. And I have uh, I got four peppers in the oh, fridge. Hey. Yeah. I have celery salt. Oh. <laughs> well, it's too, too late. Now we can add it, but it's not needed. So, okay. um, yeah, that's actually kind of funny. There was a Vienna beef and Toronto bread company, which are two big Chicago brands. Bread, Toronto bread is. Uh, You've seen obviously Chicago Town beef sandwiches. That's like most places in Chicago use Toronto bread. It's big time, uh, big time okay. company here. They right. had a they had a contest on their Instagram back in March of this year for St. Patrick's Day. They were combining. They wanted people to create the ultimate St. Patrick's Day sandwich. Oh boy! And a friend of mine sent me the post. It's like you need to get in this. You need to you need to do this. I know you can come up with something. So I I created the sandwich I called the Irish Philly. Yeah, and it was a corned beef cheesesteak. And, <laughs> that's awesome yeah. so I, I griddled up um some of the corned beef from vienna beef with onions um and then i made a guinness cheddar irish cheddar cheese whiz nice and some sauerkraut and i used the toronto bread i won that contest nice yeah, so that's I, so awesome i was the number one beef boy in chicago <laughs> so they sent me uh they sent me a care package with i had you know i have all the the classic toppings i have like Three jars of spore peppers in my fridge just hanging out. <laughs> it's funny. All right, that's amazing. I would, I would, I would eat that. I would eat that in a hot minute. That's yeah, it, we did it actually. There's a place called Tempesta Market Sandwich Shop here, and um, I was going to be doing a sandwich with them uh, anyway, and that was that was going to be the sandwich. So I just doubled it up and used it, you know, for that. And it was I couldn't have scripted something better because the Friday before the sandwich, like the next day, the Friday on a Friday they announced the winner. And I'm yes. all pumped up. I won this. I posted about it. I did a bunch of silly photoshops with me with holding like a sash that said number one beef boy and all this silly stuff. The next day was my collaboration uh, Irish Philly so people can go get it. Yeah. And it did so well. It was so funny. And uh, that's awesome. Yeah, man. that was great. But yeah, they sent me a bunch of stuff. But um, I will send you some. Okay. I need to send you some, some of that so you can make that. And then I need to send you some um, Jardinera from uh, JP Graziano. We talked about that. Yes. Yes, uh, Jardinera, um king here in Chicago. So uh, let's build a sandwich. Yeah, let's build a sandwich. Just, so we'll do that, and then we'll continue to our conversation. So I'm going to drop this down Yep. Um, so you can see a better view here. So I got the to toasted sourdough toasted on one side. Um, go ahead. I think I'm going to start. I'm going to start with a layer of pickled carrots. Let's see if I can see. I'm trying to. Okay. <laughs> Layer of pickled carrots. Okay. Yeah, let's do a pickled carrots down first because I figured they're going to, uh, if we put them on top, they're just going to fly everywhere. So yep. I think it's a point. We got to trap them. Yeah, keep them in there. All right. Let's get some broccoli. All right. Make sure we get even coverage here. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I don't want to overdo it and have, uh... yeah, I'm going to put one more little guy in here. I think I can fit him. All right, now this is where it's going to get messy, but we're just going to do it this way. Yeah, I was going to say I think I might put this on a plate. <laughs> yeah, that should be. You know what? Good call. I was yeah. I was really like, 
I was being really ambitious there. I'm like, yeah, I'll just clean up the cutting board. But you know what? Why? Well, did you go go yard with the broccoli? I I went like this. I mean, I have if you can see. Yeah, mine. yeah. Okay. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna go a little bit extra on the broccoli here. Okay. I think I can do it too. I have a couple little small guys to throw in there. Okay. All right. On a plate. I'm excited for this, man. I am too. This is gonna be good. Yeah, thank you again. Like I said, thank you again for joining with doing this today. Uh, okay. really good. All right. Um, how's your sauce? Is it warm enough still? Yeah. It... I, yeah, I think it's, it's still plenty warm. So. All right. So now uh, we have our uh, got our pickled carrots down, got our broccoli down, and debate if I just pour this over. I think we're just gonna do I'm that. I'm gonna spoon it. Are you? That's probably good. Cool. Because I don't trust me. Yeah, <laughs> I'm. You know, this is like I feel like this is like we're like a this is like a buddy cop series right now. <laughs> fly off the handle, shoot first, cop. <laughs> You're like, hey man, slow down there. Yeah, throw this all over here. I'm the one who's going to retire in one day and then gets killed. <laughs> oh, one day to retirement. All right. One day. Ah, uh, he was just about to retire. <laughs> all right. So we're just coating this up. Get this baby. This looks so good. <laughs> ridiculous in a good way. Yeah. Oh my god. Eat that Panera. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I mean, unless you literally, Panera, if you want to wet the beak a little bit, and you want to be part of it. <laughs> I, I, can take yeah. my, I can take that back really quickly. All right. So, as Sandwich Dad says, uh, we put oh, the hat yeah. on. All right. We'll top it off. Um, mm hmm. Let me get a knife. Right. Camera go up. A little cross section here. Yeah. All right. Oh, All right. Like... That's... How are we looking? <laughs> well, would you say at this point, yeah. we should have a broccoli cheddar sandwich? Uh, I think we need to what? Do we? What do we do here? I think we need to give this broccoli cheddar sandwich a go. Yes, thank you. Now I'm going to go ahead and say that all afternoon. All right. <laughs> I'm going to do it now. So let's give this broccoli cheddar sandwich a go. A go. A go. Cheers. Man, that's good. Mmm. Mmm. Uh, the seasoning blend in the cheese sauce is really like. You like it? And the pickled carrots. Excellent contrast to the, the richness of the, the, the cheese sauce. Mm. Thank you. I like it a mm. lot. I might even put, actually, maybe next time put a little more cheese on there, too. Mm -hmm. good. Mm. Oh, good. Now, big question. Yeah. You want to try to plus it up? Can it be plussed up? I don't know. We have a whole other, I mean, I literally took one bite. I think we have options to play with. Oh, we do, yeah. Um, Here, how about this? Let's play a game. You do one, I do one. But I'm not going to lie to you. My 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 go to for this is going to be something like a hot sauce. Same. I mean, I was actually probably going that way too. <laughs> Here, yeah, seems, you uh, have, I know you have an array of hot sauces. I'm going to yes. go to the fridge. I'm going to grab a hot sauce. You grab one. We'll meet back. How about that? Deal. All right. Cool. What'd you pull? All right. Got a Fiorelli, uh, Fiorelli Italian hot sauce. I and just saw that at the market it. yesterday. I've never seen that before. It's very good. All right. I'll have to get that. I, um, I've got a habanero pepper sauce. Okay. That, um, you want to try? Yeah. Bro broccoli cheese. Yeah. My significant other is here and she rarely gets to try these sandwiches because there's always meat in them. Oh, nice. Say hi, Christine. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi, I'm Billy. We're making sandwiches. It's fun. Yeah. I'm All Christine right. from I'm with Christine. Mr. With Mr. Sandwiches. 
<laughs> My significant other's in another room right now. I think she's uh, crocheting at the moment. So <laughs> she's going to make her, her sandwich debut here. Okay. What's the sauce? It's uh, cheese, uh, uh, roux, and then onion powder, garlic powder, salt. Um, white pepper and salt. White, white pepper. Fun. I know, right? Mm -hmm. This is his mansion. Billy made this. Nicely done. Nice. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'm glad you liked it. All right. Hot okay. Sauce. I, I hot sauced my uh, my my sandwich. Let's give right. this uh, potentially plussed up broccoli cheddar sauce or yeah broccoli cheese sauce sandwich a go. A go. Okay. Mm, whoa. Mm. The spicy? It's quite spicy, but the fruitiness of the a habanero is one of my favorite things. Yeah. Um, hot sauce. It works really well with that cheese sauce. Yeah. That's it's good. good. Yeah, that's a, that's a plus up for sure. I feel like, I mean, I'll always add hot sauce to something. That's why what you said about the clobbering with the uh, habaneros with the fruitiness, that's why mm -hmm. I love I love clobbering chilies. Um, I know mm -hmm. you use the balma sauce a lot from Trader Joe's. Yeah. Um, Davina, Davina there, I think you they have stuff nationwide. If you've seen mm -hmm. um, their uh, they have chopped clobbering oh, yeah. chilies. Yeah, they're really good. Yep. They actually sent me um, they sent me like a package of different different uh, spreads and olives and such that they have. Nice. This, I cannot wait to try this. this is a clobbering chili orange spread. Ooh. Yeah, wow, that, that, sounds, that sounds so good. Um, yeah, the Davina stuff, I buy their olives all the time. And I've seen yeah. the I've seen the Calabrian chilies, but we just were so in love with the Bomba sauce. Oh, well, that takes all the work out of it too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's already it's fermented and everything. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this rocks. I really like this sandwich. Yeah, this is tasty. Christine's cool. finishing the other half. <laughs> it's a, Rachel's gonna get the other half anyway too. And I actually probably got to make another one. I might have to make another one so I can actually take a photo of it. There was a stretch where. I would make the first like I swear first six weeks of this sandwich series. Mm -hmm. You know, I would make the sandwich, um, and I, you know, the first couple weeks I would make it, try it on camera. Everything was good, cool. And I had I would use the other half to take the photo or something. And then mm -hmm. I started to the point where I'm like, oh, I don't really. It looked weird when it was just half a sandwich on my pictures. <laughs> so I had a dilemma where I'm like, I don't want to make. I don't want to make two sandwiches. It's just going to be kind of wasteful. Maybe I just won't try it on camera. I'll just, I'll talk about it and finish it. Mm -hmm. My friend called it out. He goes, why are you eating your sandwich at the end of your videos? I'm like, um, I just want to take pictures. <laughs> I, just, I just need to take a picture of it. He's like, dude, just make another sandwich. Or just like, you have to take a bite of it. Like that people love seeing people eat on camera. Like, Absolutely. Just... You have to eat it, man. You have to eat your own dog food, as they say. Yeah. yeah. So, but, no, if yeah, I start now, the past few weeks, I'll have, I make, I end up making a separate sandwich and just saving it for later. So, no, um, no, I was going to say, what I do is I, I just, <clears throat> I do make half sandwiches because I, I, I don't want to be throwing out food all the time if I don't like yeah. the sandwich. So, I, I make half sandwiches. But what I do is I make it, take the picture that I use at the end of the video. Yeah. Then taste it. Hmm. I mean, that way I don't have to make extra. Honestly, I would even just take pictures during the stream, but I have, I've been using two cameras. I use the, the computer oh, yeah. um, webcam, and then I have my second in my phone as a secondary camera for like overhead shots. Mm -hmm. And so I can't, I don't have the option to do that. But no, I'm going to, my lighting is weird. Sometimes in my apartment, there's always like weird shadows and stuff. So uh, I always end up taking out to my balcony and like just taking pictures outside. But yeah, that was a, uh, this is good stuff, Barry. I appreciate you joining me today. This is, yeah, no problem. Man. Gone is what it is. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I'm struggling with this mentally because I want to keep eating, but I'm. I just told you how I want to make a second sandwich, but now in my head, I'm like, maybe I'll just take the half, take a photo of the half. I don't know. So either way, yeah. this, is eat. this is going to get eaten either way. So, yeah, 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 of course. No, this before is delicious. We, Thank you. Yeah, I was going to say before we go, a um, yeah. few things. Plug again um, where people can follow you on Instagram and TikTok. Oh, yeah. Uh, Instagram, uh, I am Sandwiches of History, uh, In the Chips with Barry, Barry's Cooking Again, Barry's Ice Cream O'Clock, and Craft Beer Barry. And then on TikTok, it's Sandwiches of History, In the Chips with Barry, um, Ice Cream O'Clock, and Barry is Cooking Again, I think. Or no, Barry Cooks TikTok. 
Okay, forgot. You're probably getting your so, notifications probably have to be off the charts with so many different accounts. I have them off. No, I was gonna say I you have to. There's no way you can you can function. No, I, I can <laughs> function if I had all the notifications that were coming in. So yeah, absolutely have that off. That's so funny. And, and well, I want to point something out about the sandwich here. Hmm? I'm not a sourdough guy. I don't typically like sourdough that much. This worked. I love this sandwich, and it I, like the fact that it was sourdough made it better. I think. Thank you. So yeah, I, I dig that. The only other options I was thinking about, like I don't want to do brioche was would be fine. Like if I did a brioche bun, it's okay. Yeah. Um, I really just I actually really did want like a sourdough roll. Yeah. That I, that's I wanted that if I could I couldn't really. I didn't want to have to go hunt down sourdough rolls, so I figured bread's gonna be the easiest thing to do. Or you know, yep. actually just a loaf. But yep. if I could have gotten like a bread bowl, yeah, and just split it. I would have loved to do that. That would have that would have been just it. The, the mm -hmm. motif would have been good and it would look cool. But this play is better. It's, I think it's easier to eat. Um, yeah, I was gonna say that, that. This brings up the the something that um, I I have a pet peeve with on some sandwiches, and that's the ratio of bread to filling. Yeah, because I really I enjoy bread. The bread has to be good, but I don't want it to be a lot of bread and a lot of filling. I want it to be mostly filling and just the right amount of bread. Yeah. And I, I think this I think this actually worked out really, really well because you got the sourdough, you got a good crunch from that the toasting it on one side. And then we got the nice roasted broccoli covered in cheese sauce and then the offset of the uh, nice quickle. Yeah. Great. It's a solid sandwich. I, I, I really like this. I would definitely make this again. Yep. Uh, I think I want to start making more soups as sandwiches. I nice. feel like a clam chowder sandwich would be pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Do that in a weird way. Clam chowder sandwich would be good, yeah. I did, there was one um, sandwich I did, a cream and mushroom soup sandwich, and it was really, really good. I mean, I feel like you can go, there's so many ways I think you can turn. Yeah. I love just messing around with the idea of like turning the other dishes into, you know, known dishes into a sandwich or even sometimes even like a pizza. Like yep. I've been messing around with the idea. I make a lot of pizzas here um, in Chicago, and I was thinking about uh, making a Bloody Mary pizza. Um, <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Where the sauce would be a you would the tomato sauce you do you do a cooked tomato sauce but season it and and cook it like you would a bloody mary so oh, yeah. sauce, lots of horseradish um you know bringing those flavors into it into the sauce and then have it as basically like a like a tomato pie so no cheese on top of it just bake it with the sauce okay um, and then after it's baked and done on each slice either take maybe take a toothpick and garnish it with your Maybe your your celery or your your shrimp or your cheese curds or whatever you wanted on there your, your olives your right. typical um, <laughs> Bloody Mary accoutrement right it will be kind of cool different you oh, know absolutely man I think yeah. it'd be awesome food should be fun yes it should fun. like I, I I'm not reinventing the wheel here I, I no. just like to make fun things I wanted to make a hot dog sandwich you know? know broccoli cheddar soup it's fun we're having fun today so, hot dog loaf. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's it's trust me as soon as i hang up like i'm gonna go into my into my bedroom i'm gonna it's gonna be a deep dive you're gonna walk in there in a week from now there's gonna be pictures of hot dogs hung up on strings all around yeah. the park <laughs> <laughs> what is, billy hasn't seen the light of day in, in no. a few days now what is he doing i'm worried about him <laughs> yeah. i have uh, i just have a like a microscope looking down like what is he doing he's, he's yeah. working hot in there hot dog loaf come on guys trying to make a hot dog sandwich um, all right. Well, guys, I thank everybody for joining us today. Um, a couple things like I always do and tell you, follow me on Instagram, the real Billy Z follow sandwiches of history and all various accounts. Um, if you like what I'm doing on here, uh, obviously follow me on Kitsch here. Leave me some comments. If you like what we did on the stream today, if you want to see more of us together, let us know. Um, and then or less. if they want to see less, they can, they can let us know that too. They see less too. Just don't even just close out the app. I mean, <laughs> throw your computer in the garbage, just get rid of it, burn it all. Get a new computer if you need it. Yeah. Um, you know, just wipe it. Um, and then, as always, uh, you know, Barry, you know my story a little bit, but I was diagnosed before muscular dystrophy last year um, called limb girdle muscular dystrophy. And I've been using my food as a way to raise awareness and funds uh, for the Muscular Dystrophy Association. Um, I do different, different food collaborations in the city of Chicago here. Um, I have a pizza I call the Tripping Billy because I lose my balance and fall because of muscular dystrophy. It's a uh, shishito pepper and corn pizza, and I've had it at nine different pizzerias around the city. Um, it sells out. Oh, God. It sells out. 
No, it's, it sells out. It's at, it's at Peace Pizza here in Chicago. So if you're in the city, today yeah. is the last day. Um, but I was able to raise over $17,000 for the Muscular Disc Association since last November by doing this. Um, building this platform through food. So if you like what I'm doing and you want to support the cause that way, there is a donation link on my kids' channel here. Feel free to make a donation if you have the means. Um, otherwise, just keep supporting. Just keep watching us and uh, watching us grow, uh, watching me grow on this page. And hopefully, Barry, like I said, we'll get it, get together again soon. Maybe maybe plus up another sandwich together. I hope so. Do it. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for joining us. Um, I will go ahead and post this up uh, in a minute here. Once we end it, it'll, the stream will be available on demand. Um, I'll post up some clips on Instagram as well. And uh, you guys enjoy your Sunday. Barry, be good. Thank you again, as always. And uh, Sunday Sandwiches Week 11 in the books. See you soon. Sounds good. Thanks, man. Take care.